My foundation for this part two of the Freedom Series comes from the very, very, very familiar passage of Scripture. And I know that sounds cliche, but it is. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. If you don't know it, now you know it. And if you don't know it, maybe you can understand why you've been fighting. And so in part two of the freedom series, I want to move past our freedom as a people. And I want to move past the freedom that's attached to our purpose. If you were not here last Sunday, and you're just getting to this conversation. I used my pulpit last Sunday to posit the Jesus justice that we find in the gospel. We learned last Sunday that God is not just a God of goodness, that God is a God of justice. And there are countless scriptures that lead us to understand that Jesus was concerned with our peace and our freedom in as much as he's concerned with being with our praise and our worship. And I helped us to understand the history of this church and all other churches that are majority African American, the history of the black church, the struggle of the black church, the reason why the black church is what it is, helped us to understand that we could not ever worship on the main floor, that we had to worship when we could worship with the master and with the church on the plantation. When we were eventually allowed to worship in that church, we had to worship in the galleys. We had to worship in the yonder areas. We had to worship in the yonder parts. And therefore, there came forth the creation and the institution, the foundation of the black church. It was founded not because we wanted to be separate. It was founded not because we didn't want to be one. It was founded out of a necessity, out of a need, out of a need to create a space because we were no longer welcome in the space where we were in. And so on that front, we understand why our people, religious or not, have been fighting for freedom. This whole journey of Christendom started with a struggle. I said, I said this whole journey of Christendom started for us with a struggle. We had to struggle to worship. I reminded you that our church, before we even got into the Methodist church, we had to worship in the woods. We had to have hush services. That's why we're so loud now. Tell your neighbor, don't, don't, don't break my flow. That, that's why we're so, and I know you may say, you may say, but you know, that was them. That was then, and that was them. But it's in our blood. It's, we were loud on the Ivory Coast. We were told to be quiet when we got to the Atlantic coast. And then when we got in our first place of freedom and we realized we can do it like we want to, we started hollering, hallelujah! And so I wanted you to understand as a culture in the first part of this series why freedom is embedded in us. It's embedded in us for the very reason that we find right here in Ephesians chapter 6. We're moving past that kind of freedom, and now I'm going to talk today for the few minutes that I have, and I won't hold you, a freedom in the spirit. Freedom in the spirit. Freedom in the spirit. This is a different kind of freedom than the freedom that we are fighting because of the enchaining and the enshackling of literally chains and shackles. And what you know to be transformed, what transcends the natural is our freedom against institutions, our freedom against an attitude, our freedom against racist and bigotist mentality. Yeah. So now we move into something that I want you to understand, my brothers and my sisters, that cannot and will never be legislated. Your freedom in the Lord. Believe it or not, my brothers and sisters, this is harder than that. <laughs> this freedom is going to be harder than the freedom that we've been so familiar with. 
the freedom that we've marched for, the freedom that we've protested for, the freedom that, that we have uh, uh, literally put up a physical force against, this kind of freedom transcends all natural being, all natural knowing, and it talks about and it deals with and it encompasses the you inside of you. There are many people that have their legal liberty but are walking around spiritually bound. Ask your neighbor, what kind of free do you really want? Legal liberty or spiritual liberty? I come to tell you that you don't even really have to choose. You can have both. You, you can have both. And so I'm, I'm going to move very fast. And so I want you to understand that what's coming to us out of this familiar passage of scripture. And I don't always like to go straight to the familiar because it can be cliche. But I cannot talk about freedom and not talk about my first point, the fight. I cannot talk about freedom and not talk about fighting. Because freedom is something that the enemy of your existence wants you to never experience. And this enemy is not a race. you got to understand this. This enemy is not a human. This, this enemy is not an institution. This enemy is not tied to your dollar or your currency. This is a, de a devil that was kicked out of hell. Uh, kicked out of heaven and sent to be bound in hell who has now moved from his occupation being a minister of music to being a minister of destruction this is a freedom that's harder to fight for than the freedom that our ancestors are familiar with this is the freedom that has driven our men away from their families this is the fight, glory to God, that have driven our men, our young boys, our young men away from their spouses, away from their greatest creation, their children, away from their legacy, away from the ability to impact generations to come. It has been said, it has been studied, it has been mentioned that when one black man gets a job, he has the power to impact Four generations behind him. Why? Because none before him had that much. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. And if getting a job impacts four generations, I wonder how many generations are in, impacted when you catch a charge. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. So the problem is to get him out of the streets. Well, I come to tell you, not really. The problem is to get him in the spirit. Get him in the spirit. I'm just talking about gender for a moment because I would come to tell you that one of the most challenging and complex questions I've ever been asked as I've been a pastor for 17 years is, can you tell me why black men are not in the church? Can you tell me why black men are not in the church? Do I got any disciples in here? And as I pondered the answer to that question, I had to realize that there is an enemy against the brethren. I had to realize that the deconstruction of our family started really with the deconstruction of our faith. The first disciples were men. If the enemy wants to get our families out of the faith, he just has to deal with the heart of the man, the heart of the head. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. The, the, the heart of him who is actually in his loins has the ability to procreate. You have to understand that there is a reason why we fight, my brothers. Sisters, there's a reason why me and my brothers are fighting. We are not fighting gangs as you may think we are. We're, it's not about we like you think it is. It's, it's not about being faithful to you like you think it is. It's not about not cheating on you like you think it is. It's not about us not having an education like you think we don't have. It's about us not having spirit, not having a relationship with the Holy Spirit.
If you can bring us away from God, you can separate us from everything that God meant for us to have. But I come to tell you, I got some believers in here. Glory to God for my corner of this society who are going to change what the enemy is trying to do. Brothers, let me hear you holler. We're going to fight for our spiritual freedom right now. It's important, moving beyond gender, it's important that you understand that freedom for oppressed people moves beyond color. Freedom for us is at the core of our religious practice. That's what I spent last Sunday talking about. But I want you to hear this, the tension uh, between or within our fight for freedom can actually be understood by a scientific concept called cognitive dissonance. I have some young psychiatrists in here. I have some young uh, psychological academics in here who are familiar with cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance, the state of having inconsistent thoughts. The state of having inconsistent, Douglas, the state of having inconsistent attitudes. The state of having, uh, Nisha, uh, inconsistent beliefs, cognitive dissonance. And this deals specifically with our behavioral decisions and the switches in our attitudes. I want you to understand that dissonance involves a conflict. That's where we get the ebonic term dis. Because dis is not, dis is not positive. If you dis somebody, you have a problem or an attitude with them or it. Dissonance is the clanging, the gnashing. Dissonance is the conflict. Dissonance is the confusion. Your cognition is in your mind. Your dissonance is in your actions. Your, your mind is telling you to believe. But your actions are telling you God isn't real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For example, let me give you a natural example. When, when people smoke, that's their behavior. Knowing that smoking causes cancer. The knowing is their cognition. The smoking is the... I'm talking to this generation. The smoking. <laughs> ah, the smoking is your behavior. But you know that smoking causes cancer. Therein, there is a cognitive dissonance. How do you find the intersection of cognitive dissonance and our fight for freedom? Because of what is revealed to us in Ephesians chapter 6. And we always read the entire pericope of scripture and don't sit with the first few words. Can you all read that scripture? For we Stop. Say it again. Say it again. There are people that are not tied to and don't appreciate our religious experience that don't understand, Sister Thomas, why we do everything that we do. They don't understand the celebration. They don't understand the warfare praise. They know what prayer is, Brother T, but they don't understand what intercession is. It's right there on the screen. For we, this is the holy writ. This is the word of God that's releasing you not to be relaxed. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It's releasing you not to stay still. Matter of fact, the word of God says, don't quench the Holy Spirit. Well, how do you know the Holy Spirit moves? Well, because when, when it descended upon them like a dove, the first thing it did was start moving their mouth. 
y'all ain't saying nothing to me. And I know one thing, fire doesn't stay still. And the Holy Spirit is literally spiritual. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. If you want the Holy Ghost or if you got the Holy Ghost or if you need another portion, the first thing you got to understand is that you got to fight. the For. Say it again. If you want your freedom, you got to understand that you have to fight. Oh, my God. We are literally a generation of church that used to sit on the back row and snicker and laugh at the people who are doing what we do now. <laughs> Just see Sister Pat. <laughs> oh my gosh, she over there dancing. Ah. And then we go home and we play about it. I, I watched a Facebook Live feed of some high school kids who got left alone in the music room. What, did, did you see this? You seen it? One of the kids jumped on the piano and the other kid jumped in front of the podium. And the other kids, some of them split up and was the choir and the others split up and they were the audience. Huh? And they literally started having church in the music room. And somebody took out their phone and started recording it. And one and the preacher was preaching and he was going hard. And the piano player was playing hard. And the people was falling over. And it was like football players in there. It was like all athletes. I didn't even really see any women, right? It was all like, like all men. And they were in there. And they were dancing. And they were rolling. And they were jumping. And they were shouting. And they were ha, 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 This is what happened in our church every Sunday. And then they grew up. And then they came to Citadel. Huh? And they said, I ain't looking for no church. I'm looking for a club. <laughs> I'm not looking for the Lord. I'm looking for love. <laughs> and, they, and they mess around here and they stop going to church. And next thing you know, they found their place of power. And when y'all first came to this church, many of you all didn't have a praise. Many of you all didn't have a praise because you didn't want to praise. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I don't have churchy praises. I got dancers that still trying to figure out how to shout. Uh, Sister Curtis, Brother Gene, did you see it? Because what you under don't understand is that in the spirit you're wrestling. Can I get some warriors to open your mouth? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh uh, uh uh. Uh uh. Never mind. No, sit down. Sit. I don't want to start that. No. No, no, no. My, my bad. No, seriously. Sit down. Sit down, because see, if we start that, uh-uh. Look at your neighbor and say, I don't mean no harm, but you may laugh at me today. But you're going to be me one day. I want you to show your neighbor what a praise really means to you. I need somebody that already got the Holy Ghost. To wrestle for just, for just 15 seconds. Huh? He come out. Wrestle! Come on, somebody! That's it. That's it. That's it. But before I tell you that, let me tell you this. Don't knock my praise because you don't know what it took to get me out here today. Some of us have been going through in secret. You ought to make your praise public today. Some of us have been fighting battles.
battles in our minds. We've been fighting our families. We've been fighting our own children. We've been fighting our demonic spirits. I dare you to make your praise public today. Wrestle with it. Wrestle with it. Wrestle with it. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord, Lord he delivered us. Go ahead. Oh. Hallelujah. Just slap somebody and say freedom. Tag three more people and say freedom. 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 That's the end goal. Freedom. That's the end goal. Freedom. That's why I'm headed. That's why I praise him. That's why I serve him. That's why I worship him. That's why I got it. That's what I want to get. That's what I'm going to hold on to. Somebody say freedom. Somebody fight for it. Look up and down your row and say, this praise is dangerous. Come on, look up on your row and say, this is dangerous. When, when you were singing and you told the people to jump in the water, that's dangerous. Because either you're going to jump or either you're going to drown. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I've been to the Jordan River. Either you're going to sink or either you're going to swim. And you know what the water, there's a passage of scripture that said God would trouble the water. You can't be still and win the fight for your life. This is the most suicidal generation of the entire existence of humanity. And you mean to tell me just because you're 21 you can't praise God? I bet you all the men in here better open your mouth and fight. I bet you all the sisters in here better open your mouth and fight. Because you got to be free. I said you got to be free. I said you got to get free. Help me, Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah, no. oh. yes, God. Somebody shout freedom. Why? I'm trying to get past my first point. Let me tell you, a part of our problem, it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against and, and the, of, against, in what? The word of God releases us to wrestle. Because if we don't, what's going to happen? If we be still, if we be silent, if we be docile, if we be, if, 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 if we just be disengaged, what's going to happen is you're going to find your peace. But what's going to happen is that's a different kind of peace. You're going to mess around and make peace with Satan. Tell your neighbor, don't make peace with Satan and be at odds with God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. How do I make peace with Satan? Be offended by the worship. How do I make peace with Satan? Have a problem with the service. How do I make peace with Satan? Be offended by the word of God. How do I make peace with Satan? Be offended by your pursuit of righteousness. You got to understand that people are literally at odds with the church. 
And what you do when you switch sides, you don't even understand that you're making a deal with the devil. And that's why the Bible says that you got to wrestle. And if you are coming into spiritual warfare, it's a violent thing. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, but mighty through God, but mighty through God, the weapons wrestle weapons. It sounds like warfare. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Glory to God. And it also says, it also says in another passage of scripture, glory to God, it teaches us for the kingdom of heaven suffereth. Are there, is there any Bible in here? Is there any Bible in here? The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, but the violent by so 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 you can't leave here today and literally join a spiritual army outside of here. I don't understand, you know, why we gotta shout. It's because you don't you ain't free yet. <laughs> um because when you're getting free from spiritual wickedness, it's not a peaceful thing. It's not a passive thing. Because when the walls of Jericho had to come down, they did not sit in their houses in their huts and pray. When the walls of Jericho had to come down, they had to get out and start moving. And the Holy Spirit put them in a spiritual army and said, walk around Jericho. Can you imagine the minds of people who are walking around? This must be stupid. This feels stupid. How in the world are we going to take these walls down just by walking around? You know, the minds of the people in city, I mean Jericho. You, 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 you know, you, you, can, you can imagine. Well, I don't know. So why are we doing what he say do? If we want to take the walls down, we need to be taking out our battle axes. And we need to start chopping away at the walls. But the leader said, uh-uh, do what I say do. I just need you to walk around. Y'all ain't talking to me. Glory to God. Understand that in order for us to fight this battle, it's not the kind of warfare that's going on right now in the Middle East. It's the kind of warfare that's going on right now in Middle Greensboro, in the citadel of praise. Glory to God. It's the kind of warfare that's going on when your neighbors start clapping and you like, I wish they would just be quiet. When your neighbor starts shouting, I wish they would just be quiet. I don't even understand why we got to be in here so long. Don't you understand? We're tearing down walls right now. We're tearing down walls right now. Glory to God. We're tearing down principalities. We're tearing down spiritual wickedness. Glory to God. Don't make peace with the devil. Open your mouth and shout glory. Sit down. I, I, I just, I, I just want to close it. Sit down. Sit down. Time has expired. Yes. Some of you all. So I, I, I would have you to understand. So there was this other kind of wrestling. And you know what wrestling is. Matter of fact, do I have any people that used to wrestle in here? Any people that used to wrestle in here? Let me see. You used to wrestle? Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Sam Pierre used to be a wrestler. Uh huh. Oh. Xavier used to wrestle. Hmm. Joe used to wrestle. Wow. Sam, come here, bro. Um. Elijah, come come here, bro. Y'all standing side by side. They're not ready to fight. Oh, you done made friends with the enemy. That's not my mentality. Because behind him is his children. Behind him is his brothers and best friends. On the other sides of these folk that's behind him is his profession.
anybody ever in here ever applied for a job that you was qualified for? And you never even got an interview? And, and you got a degree but can't get an interview? Bro, just keep fighting. Lift your hands. You can. I just want you to lift them so that you can receive something right now. God our Father, Christ our Savior, Spirit our Comforter, I thank you for this opportunity to impart faith into their hearing. And now, God, I, I present this this congregation, this league of worshipers to you, God, asking that every spiritual battle that's, that we're fighting and facing in this, in this sanctuary, I pray that the spirit of a victorious warrior, that you would open heaven and pour us out spiritual strength. We don't need money. We need power. We don't need finances. We need favor. God, I pray for every weary person. Your word collides with our weariness because it said when we're weary, our strength, your strength is made perfect. Lift your hands. God, I pray right now for the impartation of supernatural strength. All over the sanctuary. People that are watching on live. Right where you are. I pray that strength comes into your hospital room. Strength comes into your residences. Strength in the weak areas of your body. Because you got to wrestle this week. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that we will not fear the fight, nor will we make peace with the devil. And before I close this prayer, Satan, I'm going to tear your kingdom down. Satan, I'm going to tear your kingdom down. Satan, we're going to tear your kingdom down in Jesus' name. Somebody open your mouth and seal it with a praise.